and welcome back. This is going to be episode 8 of the Bertram Repower. This is some exhaust fittings. That is the surge tube end cap glued on there and the, those are the mods to the, the Vernitone mufflers. Getting uh, putty pulled around there before fire retardant resin and the layup. Next we'll be templating the the Kusa bulk up on this section of bulkhead. We end up with using inch and a half Kusa. You'll see that go in in a little bit. In episode seven, as I finished up there, we found this in our, our shaft log. This is the shaft log tubing getting prepped for installation. And that was a fracture that occurred during shipping. And it was very hard to see at first. We didn't use that section ultimately. Here's the five inch exhaust tubing sitting on its supports. I believe those are three quarter inch Kusa bonded into the boat yet. Those were yanked out of there and then glassed to the pipe before they were attached to the boat. There's a two inch water lift muffler. That'll make a loop coming out of the top. A, it'll be a siphon break loop and then dump into that pipe right there. That's the one that jogs. That's that inch and a half Kusa bulk up section. It'll get glassed in and then that five inch hole at the top there where the surge tube pokes through. That'll get cut after this is completely bonded and then glassed in place. There it is primed with final ester resin. And there's the struts. This is the final revision of the struts. And you can see there we got that 8.05 on that level, but when the wind blew and the tide was right, that thing would turn to 8.00. But we figured that was close enough for us to go ahead and get our shaft tubes installed. That's what we're doing here with the, the steel rod in place of the, the propeller shafts. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet. There's also some new features. We'll get into that later. Um, the join button and super thanks and all these cool little things. That's the shaft lob tube prepped and fit through the hull. That piece that's sticking out is just going to stay there so we can get proper alignment and get it fully glassed on the inside and then we'll cut that bottom excess off flush with the hull. We use those PVC bushings for alignment. You can see that PVC bushing right there and that's bonded in with vinyl ester resin mixed with West System 404. A little bit of cabosil. These are looking at the rudder ports. We've got those rudders positioned just outside the shaft. You can see right there. Uh, it's enough room to pull the propeller shaft without having to remove the rudders. It's really not that big of a deal to drop the rudders. It sure would be nice not to have to disturb all the steering system. So that's why those are out there. And another point, this may be a bit of a stretch, but the rudders being just outside the propeller shaft may see better water flow. If anyone has any experience in that, leave a comment below. It would be impossible to prove it unless we did a before and after. Just curious if anyone has any input on that. Thank you. 
And here I'm marking a about a quarter inch dimple inside the recess. I'm using a drill bit that is the same size as the hole drilled in the strut. And we're just making marks so we can get back to this point if we need to. However, the final installation or holes will not be drilled until the engines are installed with the real propeller shafts coupled to the engines. And if we have to float the strut at that point, we certainly will. It won't be a lot. We'll see when we get there. This was actually pretty shocking. I measured from the coupler on the jig, the engine jig, and it came 84 inches to the back of the strut barrel. It was exactly 84 inches on both sides. It was pretty impressive. I didn't expect that. And now we're back in the boat that Kusa Bulkup is bonded in place with a nice high density putty fillet pulled around it. Coming up here, we're going to do one of the final layups in the, in the boat. Um, that was a a healthy laminate there. Um, man, I gotta think what, what we dropped at that. It was 1208, two layers of 3610, another 1208 with three quarter ounce on top. It was a healthy layup, that's for damn sure. Oh, and this arch, man, this arch. Whew. Let me tell you about this arch. I had probably, I think six layers of 3610 cut. I was doing 1208 top and bottom with some matte top and bottom. And I had it about three quarters of the way complete and it slipped and fell. It collapsed. And it was just too much weight for the surface tension to hold. I ended up saving it and getting a couple layers of 1208 up there. Um, but I had to throw away a big pile of resin fiberglass. It pissed me off, but I didn't give up and I got the 1208 on there. And I had to end up doing multiple layups just so that it wouldn't fall like that again. Okay, so that five inch pipe and those supports were glassed together upside down and then it was ready to be bonded in we wanted to do that big heavy layup from the strut to the shaft log before we put anything else in our way it uh it was hard enough to work in there and not having that pipe there was a, a place to set fiberglass and tools and buckets and stuff like that so we waited till that big layup was done and we got in here and glued these in and they're bonded in with Vinylist resin, West System 404 with a little cabisil. I'll turn around here real quick. Look at that bulk up on the ring, this, the arch. I think it's almost done at that point. I have maybe one more layup to go all the way to the top, but the arch is pretty much well complete there. And it's just going back. That was the, the final layup that we did there. Uh, we may have added about half an inch of, of glass in that layup right there. There's the exterior. After we ran a radius around all the inside stuff there, I jumped out there, pulled a nice radius around the exterior while everything was still wet. And 
and this is the bottom side of the rudder shelf. It's getting ready to go in. You'll see those dimensions represent what ends up being ledges that are hot glued to the transom. When we set this in putty, they will also hold putty and attach to the transom. And when that cures, I will pull a bonding putty radius across the bottom and the top and sides as well. You'll also see on the sides there, this notch. I had to take three quarters of an inch of material out where the rudder shelf sets on the outboard stringers. We needed to lower the shelf three quarters of an inch. We kind of knew we had to do something. We just didn't know what we were going to have to do. We weren't sure if we had to block it up or lower it. Ended up we had to lower it and there it is glued down. There's also some inch and a half CUSA blocks. Here it is glued in place. Then what I'll do the next day after this all sets, I will take some bonding putty and pull a radius around the whole thing. Top, bottom, sides, everything. That I'm just looking at that surge tube. So this is before the bonding putty radius and this is after the bonding putty radius. Again, I did the entire perimeter. The bonding putty is to make a nice smooth transition for fiberglass to roll from the shelf to the transom. This is before I do an acetone bath. I'll go after it starts to gel. Once it starts to firm up and get just past the gel, I'll take a bucket of acetone and a rag and I'll go around and scrub it and it'll remove all the little it'll remove all the little points so that I don't have to sand. And if I do sand the next day, it's minimal. It's just because I'm being picky. Um, but this is after the acetone bath. You see how clean that actually is. Um, you could lay glass right on that and, and not have to do any sanding. Like I said, of course, I, I will hit it with a little 36 grit. And, uh, but it does save a lot of effort getting back in there. That's after the acetone bath. Pretty clean. And before I left, I did a layup on the top side of that shelf. It was real easy to do, uh, and it was getting late and I was getting kind of tired. But I did want to get a glass on that shelf, and I did. Uh, it's like a 1208, 1708, three quarter ounce top and bottom, and uh, seems staggered, overlaps staggered, and it blend, blends in nice. So I'll get a full layup the next day. Uh, the bottom side of that was not easy. You'll see that. And here is all my material pre-cut to size. You'll notice the round corners. I did give Andy at Boatworks today props for that. It uh, works nice. Laying up underneath that shelf was a challenge, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I, I did have all my material pre-cut, wet it out. It was easy to wet out on uh, cardboard and you've got to move rather quickly before it falls apart and gets too squishy to lift off of the cardboard and put in place. But that's how I do it. I, I don't wet it out up in place. That would, that would be a mess. Um, but I saturated on the cardboard Lift it up, put it in place. You just, just kind of got to move quickly. Uh, if you wait too long, it turns to mush. So it did work pretty good. This is going to come up later when we get to exhaust. If we ever have a back pressure issue, that'll come up. This is the low smoke vinyl ester resin we're using for all the exhaust mods. And I got this from FGCI, Fiberglass Coatings Incorporated. And it's good resin. It's actually really nice to work with. It may be better than the vinyl ester resin I've, I've been using. 
um, and pretty fairly priced from those folks. Those are the mods. Um, those were laid up with 1208 and three quarter ounce. This is that little patch there was for an end cap. That's the top of the muffler. It was just glued together and we weren't thrilled with that. So we went and put fiberglass over top of all the glue seams. And those came out very nice. Um, that resin was really, really nice to work with. And there's covering up the glue seams on the, the water lift muffler for the generator. And now back to the rudder ports. Um, we just finished glassing that rudder shelf. And so now it's time to poke a hole on the top of that shelf. And as you can see there, that rudder is hanging from its own safety collar. And it is nicely centered in that, that reinforced block with the solid fiberglass inlay. And at this point, we were able to check to see how that port lays up against the hull. Those that we know are original Bertram rudder ports. Um, they could be newer in 1969, but either way, they look pretty original. Okay, now we're gonna jump around a little bit here. That is showing the Kusa bulk up completely glassed. And then we're gonna look over at the starboard muffler. First time it's set in its actual location, going through the bulkhead. I think we're going to jump back out and look at the rudder ports again. And, um, yep, back here at the rudder ports. What I had to do is router out and grind, grind out uh, a slight angled little recess. You can see on the one side it, it's going up into the hall a little bit just to get that rudder to sit perfectly vertical and in line with the, um, the strut. And this was the starboard rudder post it had been bent and then straightened but not very well this is the starboard rudder port recess all i'm doing is removing about an eighth of an inch of fiberglass on the outboard side those ports were not cast to match the exact dead rise here we're looking at a moisture meter you see when it pegs there, it's not actually moisture. It's it's a stringer or, or a deck ledge or something of that sort. That right there, you can see there is moisture in the laminate there. But in general, as we go across the transom, it's pretty damn dry. It's uh, It's been opened up and had plenty of time to dry. Uh, I'm not too familiar with moisture meters or not something I deal with a lot. But it actually does look pretty good for, from my perspective. Later that day, we did a three quarter ounce, 1208, three quarter ounce layup across the transom from the boot stripe down. We did that with epoxy resin. And this here is a 5 8 fiberglass tube cut at a 45 degree angle and then glued into the hull. You'll see the fairing on the outside. This will be the holding tank vent. There will be a screen mesh on the inside of this and then a charcoal filter in line to the holding tank. It is as close to the transom and as close to the water line as we can get. And now we're looking at some rubber strips that I cut to fit in between the mufflers. After I got that eighth inch rubber to fit perfect, I went back and laid a three quarter ounce strip of glass on top of the Kusa. That is the hole for the surge tube to go through the 
the uh, rear bulkhead. Here we're down in the bilge where that uh, three kilowatt transducer is recessed into the hull. And what we were doing there, I was pulling um, an Alexiel fairing putty radius around in there just prior to bilge paint. And these are the drain holes in the inboard stringers in the engine compartment. They get sealed with vinyl or resin. We're gonna take a quick glance at the muffler cradles trimmed. And then we're going to the engine room bilge after that fairing putty gets sanded out. And prepped for the first coat of diamond tough. This was my first uh, attempt with diamond tough. It's some kind of urethane, it's a four to one mix. Um, but it's also supposed to be uh, moisture resistant and I rolled it on it it did uh, it rained very very heavily it was very humid and it did fog out got a matte finish after it dried and this is gonna wrap up episode 8 here you're looking at two coats of high build on that aluminum frame that is where you walk from the cockpit to the in the cabin door. And that diamond tuff was sanded out. So it, like I said, it turned matte and we got sanded that out. And in episode nine, we will pick up right here. This is a gutter system for the engine boxes. And that's where we'll start up again. I appreciate y'all watching. Thank you so much. Appreciate the likes, appreciate the subscribes. Until the next episode, y'all take care. And if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, maybe share with a friend, and I'll keep doing it. Thank you.